the hypersonic XLC at Virginia's King's Dominion. Everyone expected great things from this ride. Unfortunately, its run at the park was nothing short of a complete disaster. But why exactly did this self-proclaimed extreme launch coaster end up as scrap metal? It's time to go back to the past and find out. In the early 2000s, King's Dominion was in the midst of a launch coaster boom. Between 1996 and 2006, the park would install four launch coasters. After Flight of Fear in 1996 and Volcano the Blast Coaster in 1998, park officials wanted yet another launch coaster, one that would fit perfectly with then-owner Paramount Park's emphasis on in-your-face thrill rides. But if they wanted to outdo their last three, they would have to set their sights on something much crazier. Their plans would take them to a prototype project by a American manufacturer SNS Sansei. Then known as SNS Power, the company got their start manufacturing bungee jumping and trampoline equipment. The company would enter the thrill ride market with their turbo drop and space shot drop tower rides. These flat rides would use a pneumatic compressed air system to launch passengers into the air and shoot them back down to the ground faster than gravity alone. The ride was an instant hit, and in just six years, 89 of them had been installed around the world. Believe it or not, it was this flat ride that would help inspire the creation of the SNS's first roller coaster. In the late 90s, SNS founder Stan Chekets was snowmobiling near his home, the Utah Mountains, when he came to a near vertical slope. As he drove his snowmobile up this slope, he was reminded of the space shot, and an idea came to him. What if he could take the compressed air propulsion system of the space shot and turn it on its side? What if he could use this system to create an all new type of launched roller coaster? The task would be challenging, but SNS was ready to take it on. SNS had never designed a roller coaster before and starting off with such an ambitious project brought plenty of challenges. The first challenge came with the ride's wheels. SNS realized that the standard polyurethane wheels would create an uncomfortable amount of noise during the forceful pneumatic launch. SNS realized that the noise would disturb park guests and therefore would turn away potential buyers. So in order to quiet the ride down, SNS made the unorthodox decision of using the same kind of air-filled inflatable tires found on aircrafts. In 1999, SNS introduced the prototype to their first roller coaster model, the Thrust Air 2000. Built at their testing facility in Logan, Utah, this fully functioning prototype was like something straight out of a cartoon. Its signature element was a massive towering 170 foot tall top hat that sent riders both upwards and downwards at a blunt 90 degrees. The launch system involved several massive air compressors. These were hooked up to the launch platform, filling a large canister with compressed air. When the air was released, it would shoot against a piston connected to a steel cable. This cable was connected to a device known as a launch dog, which the ride vehicles would latch onto. When the air was released, it would push against the piston, pulling the launch dog and launching riders forwards. The train was catapulted at a rate never seen on any roller coaster, 0 to 80 miles per hour in 1.8 seconds. The concept took the coaster community by storm, and enthusiasts were on the edge of their seats waiting to see where the first one would go. On August 1st, 2000, King's Dominion officially announced the debut of the World world's first ever Thrust Air 2000, Hypersonic XLC, its acronym standing for Extreme Launch Coaster. In a likely effort to save money, King's Dominion purchased the prototype straight from SNS's testing facility. While the ride was constructed from the original prototype, significant changes were made for King's Dominion. First and foremost, the trains would now feature a lap bar instead of an over-the-shoulder restraint. Moreover, it would replace the original simple oval-shaped layout with a slightly more elaborate one. The first drop was also shortened considerably. This ensured the ride would fit well into the park's landscape and allow room for the pathways underneath. With these changes in place, construction was underway, and the park would regularly post updates on its official website. Months of anticipation later, Hypersonic XLC would finally open to the public on March 24, 2001. The ride experience went as followed. The layout would start with a slow U-turn out of the station towards the launch platform. Upon reaching the platform, passengers would hear the trains loudly clip onto the launch dog. Seconds later, riders were shot for Forwards, hitting 80 miles per hour in less than two seconds. Faster than you can say the name of the ride, riders would climb up a top hat at a 90 degree angle before reaching the crest at 165 feet in the air. Reaching the ride's peak at such a fast rate gave riders a powerful jolt of ejector airtime, sending them practically flying out of their seats. Afterwards, the train would dive downwards, once again at 90 degrees, before a massive bank turn to the left. This is where the ride differed vastly from the original layout, as passengers maneuvered a smaller bank turn to the right, followed by a small airtime hill. 
Immediately after this airtime hill, the train would hit the final brake run, leaving guests to contemplate what they just rode. The ride was an instant hit with park guests. Despite its short length, the XLC was widely praised for both the intensity of its launch and the insane airtime on its top hat. Indeed, it seemed like the XLC had a promising future at the park, but like many prototypes, it opened with a lot of problems. The main issues with the ride arose from SNS's inexperience in designing a roller coaster, let alone a first of its kind attraction like the XLC. During its opening year, the coaster would constantly close down for maintenance due to several design flaws. One major issue with the ride was its tires. According to a report by Utah State University, the high g-forces of the ride would often crush the air-filled tires. Moreover, significant flaws with the wheel's hubs would also cause the tires to go flat. There were fail-safes to protect riders from flat tires, but these instances shut down the ride nonetheless. Additionally, the solid I-beam track was under-engineered to be too short. This meant that it couldn't properly handle the ride's forces and would end up cracking in some spots. After an entire season of sporadic operation and a few rollbacks, King's Dominion decided to fix up the ride for 2002. The park would spend plenty of time and money on trying to refurbish the XLC. The upgrades were so extensive that the coaster wasn't ready for the park's opening day in 2002 and wouldn't open until June of that year. Once it did open back up, park fans immediately noticed the coaster's new trains. Not only did these trains feature an upgraded wheel assembly, but they also had a few more more obvious changes. For one thing, the windshield was removed to allow passengers to get a better feel of the ride's intensity. In addition, the seats were given a lot more padding, especially the headrest. This padding was meant to protect riders who neglected to keep their head back during the launch and lower liabilities for injuries. A major letdown for enthusiasts, however, was the alleged strengthening of the Top Hat's trim brakes. Riders reported significantly less airtime in 2002, and this was likely an attempt at preventing the tires from being damaged. Along with other unspecified upgrades, the XLC seemed to be on the right track. Unbeknownst to guests though, the coaster only had half a decade left to live. The XLC's run at the park was pretty much defined by its downtime. It would constantly break down and King's Dominion reportedly poured millions of dollars into maintaining and repairing the coaster. Sadly, no amount of upgrading seemed to make the XLC fully reliable. To put it simply, this coaster suffered from being a prototype. It was the first ride of its kind and was literally purchased from a testing facility. Its long-term maintenance demands were far beyond the park's resources. Despite their best efforts to keep the coaster running and constant upgrades, park officials decide such an unreliable ride was not worth the money or the trouble to operate. So in late 2006, the decision was made to put the coaster up for sale. However, considering its plethora of maintenance issues, no park was willing to buy it. Therefore, after one last season in 2007, the XLC was officially removed from the park's website in January 2008. Deconstruct would begin shortly afterwards, and by the end of the year, it was all gone. Perhaps the most interesting thing about the XLC's closure is that it arguably could have been avoided. The same year that Hypersonic opened, SNS would end up fixing a lot of the Thrust Air model's flaws with their second installation. Dota Donpa at Japan's Fuji Q Highland. This coaster was much, much more reliable upon its opening. It was an all new model that was built for the park instead of the modified test model that the XLC was. Perhaps if King's Dominion had bought a brand new thrust air coaster instead of buying the prototype, the XLC would still be running. On the bright side, SNS would continue to improve their air launch coaster model way beyond their initial prototype. In addition to transforming Silver Dollar City's bus saw falls into an air launch coaster in 2004, they would install several more air launch coasters, gaining more experience with each one. And in 2018, SNS would begin construction on an all new air launch coaster at Illinois Six Flags Great America. This coaster named Max Force will take guests from 0 to 78 miles per hour in just two seconds. Not quite as fast as the XLC, but likely much more reliable. As for what's left of the XLC, while the track has been completely removed, the station building and the air compressor shed are still standing to this day. If you have a good eye, you can spot them both from Wincy and Twisted Timbers. These buildings continue to stand as a reminder of what could have been, and Hypersonic XLC will forever remain one of the biggest failures in roller coaster history. Special thanks to Taylor Bybee from Coaster Studios for doing this video with me. He's got some awesome coaster related content on his channel too, so if you want to check it out, I've posted a link in the description. Thanks for watching everyone. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can check out my website at themeparkcrazy.com. This is Theme Park Crazy, and I'll see you all next time.